Hello and welcome to day three of the restoration, the radical restorative yoga poses. These series that I do specifically for the first three days of your menstrual cycle have to do with accommodating what's actually happening in the body during your menstrual phase. This is a time of rest. These three days are the equivalent of the good night's sleep, the six to eight hours that our friends born without a uterus are getting. During that time, they are releasing, they are restoring, and they are resetting. We are literally releasing in a very massive way. We are restoring in a very massive way, and we are resetting in a very massive way because we are doing, we are preparing ourselves to be good as new for the next 28 day cycle. So the more we lean into this time of rest, oration, restoration, the more powerfully we're going to show up in each menstrual phase that follows. So <laughs> embrace rest as much as you can, limit outside stimulation as much as you can. And to that end, we're going to choose yoga poses that are going to also accommodate that time of rest and inner restoration more than they would be about output, about expression. Don't worry, <laughs> the follicular phase is coming. The time of beginnings is coming and we'll get to do all that fun, expressive, grit, strengthening, stretching, heart beating, motivating stuff there. But let's be where we are even if you don't think this is where you're supposed to be. You are. Day three, restoration. Let's begin. We're going to start with our hands in prayer and we're going to let our eyes float closed if that feels in alignment with where you are today. Our hands are at the heart chakra. Our palms are together. Our fingertips are touching. Our hands are parallel to each other and in contact with each other at the same time. Between those moments of contact are little spaces of air. And those little spaces, imagine them to be filled with this green light that, that for lack of a better phrase, because this is what's coming up right now, that is channeled through this heart chakra. You see the wrists, the, the bottoms of your wrists are on your heart chakra. So imagine that the, these hands are acting like this funnel like this tap that we might put in a tree if we were in Vermont and we were tapping the trees for maple syrup. We just tap and we let the syrup flow out of the tree. We let these hands in this heart position tap the heart chakra to allow this beautiful green light energy to move through our palms to be channeled and filling in those little tiny spaces within the space that we've created with our hands pressing against each other. And now I'd like you to let those fingertips point out, let the contact with the heart release and let the fingertips point out in the direction as if it was continuing this line, this line that's parallel with the ground led by the fingertips. And then I'd like you to let the fingertips open and don't forget this channel of light is coming through this whole time siphoning from the heart now let the fingertips release each other let the hand release let them release and disengage from each other but let that green light continue to grow between the hands and now where you first had a line of energy of green light energy now you've got essentially this this triangle that is pointing out from the heart chakra and continues between your hands. And as that triangle opens and opens, let the hands open, let the fingertips reach out. Shoulders are reaching down, shoulders are pinning towards the core. Our sits bones are in contact with the ground so that our spine can remain erect. Our chin is parallel to the ground so that we're not pushing through our forehead to reach the sky, nor are we hunching over so that our chin is kissing our chest. And continue to let those arms open, those fingertips open until they reach 
180 degree angle. That means from fingertip to fingertip, you essentially have a flat line. But if you feel too much tension, if you find that you are working a little too hard, I took, I took a few years off from yoga for a time and I could not open my arms in this way to have this 180 degree stretch from fingertip to fingertip for about three or four classes before I could, before I could do this again. So please be kind with yourself. And now it is wide open as your hands and fingertips might be as far as they might be from each other, allow that green light energy to just be experienced in the front side of the body. And then I'd like you to turn your palms up towards the sky. And now that energy is not only on the front side of the body, but now it's over your head so that one side of you is just, the front side of you is just this bathed in this green light energy, this half sphere of green light energy. And now turn the palms down towards the earth and then point the palms to face the back wall and you have just turned up the energy so that your entire body from fingertip to fingertip in 360 degrees of directions is bathed. Your back body, your front body is bathed in this green light heart energy. Letting this energy stay around you, let the palms come to the earth on either side of your body. Feel that breath come into the belly on your next inhale, feeling the first and second chakras expand in all 360 degrees. So your lower waist is expanding, your lower back is expanding, your side bodies are expanding on the inhale. And on the exhale, feel everything contracting as you let that air come out and through your nose. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Really good. And now I'd like you to let your eyes float open. And we're just going to raise our arms up overhead, making a V for victory. I have a nephew named Victory and he's so beautiful, oh my God. And we're going to pin our sits bones towards the ground and we're going to let our body lean forward, letting our body lay on the ground or if it's not flat to the ground, just add a pillow or as many pillows as you need so that your body is in contact, your arms, your heart, your forehead, something of that core area, your forehead, your nose, your shoulder tips, maybe your arms, your upper arms, your belly, your heart is in something is in contact with the ground. And then I'd like you to just walk your left hand towards your right hand and your right hand out a little bit so that it's along the diagonal of your knee, of your right knee. And feel that stretch. This stretch is happening through the left side body. And it's passive, which means that you're just breathing, you're not anchoring, you're not reaching and then relaxing, you're just breathing. Feel that. Gravity does the work in yin. Nothing for you to do. But notice what's happening. Notice what's coming up. In my priestess phase, which is what 
we refer to during the menstrual phase. We refer to it as priestess phase and the fierce gentleness collective. I don't have a lot of thoughts, but I do have a lot of landings of knowledge, a lot of realizations. A journal is really great to keep, like pretty much always with yoga, because things come up, things are revealed. It's part of the work of yoga. Okay, continue to walk that side body, this right arm. Walk it, and I'd just like you to bring the left arm so that it, it is reaching over. And please do anchor that shoulder tip so that it's just kind of, the left side body is just kind of hanging over at that 180 degree angle. So you're just like a pane of glass. You're not flat, you're not bent over like this, and you're not facing up too far. You're just flat as if two pieces of glass. And you're just letting this arm hang over and feeling this, this relaxed stretch passive stretch. The right arm is doing a lot of work here. It's just supporting you. You can also use a bolster if this is uncomfortable. But if this is like 20% energy, 20% effort, then you're in a good spot. Mm, let it all just hang. Okay, and now let's walk it backwards. So we're gonna just bring our, I have to move up a little bit on my mat to create space behind me, but I'm just gonna bring my right arm and my left arm back. And I'm just going to relax back, let my shoulders again anchor towards the core and just lean back and let your head rest back. If that's comfortable, it's not comfortable for me. So I'm gonna let my head rest forward. Just really luxuriate in this space. My shoulders are, oh, they're supposed to be pinned down, my bad. I'm getting a different, I was doing the wrong stretch. <laughs> Let the shoulders stay pinned down. That traction, the, if you let your shoulders stay pinned down towards the core, but you've got your front body leaning into that, the shoulder blades and the back body. The hands are braced on the ground and they're pushing away from the ground. Then you have this lovely leaning effect so that the front body and the back arms are pushing against each other, making the amount of effort it takes to hold this pose minimal. The neck doesn't have a lot to do, which is pretty cool. Let's take advantage of that fact. Let's let the head roll forward, chin to chest. Let the left ear roll towards the right shoulder tip. Let the chin go towards the sky. I'm not breaking my neck today, it's not warm enough. But you can if you want to. But pass off, uh, be careful, okay. Uh, let your right ear come to your right shoulder tip, your chin to chest, right ear to right shoulder tip. Mm. These are mild stretches compared to what we do in Yang. Chin to the sky, left ear, left shoulder tip, chin to the chest. Okay. Now you can recenter yourself if you needed to. And we're just going to change the fold of the leg. So now whatever leg you had on top in easy pose, just put it on the bottom now. So just flip the feet, whatever foot on, was on top, put that one, let it go to the bottom and bring the other foot on top. And now let's do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to start, two arms come up to V, V for victory and you're going to bring your body forward and lay it flat to the ground. Bring your left hand so that it's on the diagonal, same diagonal as your knee, and walk your right hand to your left hand and feel that stretch. Keep your body in contact with your bolster or the ground.
what opens up when we're not going for a goal? When we're just letting things be? What tiny space are we allowing to reveal itself through release? through releasing that goal. Sometimes we go after things and because we're so focused on the goal, we miss out on so many other things. There's an anonymous quote. It's about the journey, not the destination. Startups use this mindset. They have a goal, but they look forward to failing. They look at what is happening along the way and pay more attention to that than the outcome because that's where they'll find ways to make things better. They'll take small failures in exchange for giant victories. Okay, let's bring it, let's take the same thing that we did on the right side, on the left side. So our left arm is supporting our, our left side body and our right arm is just gonna reach up and out and passively hang over just passively like the most like the laziest arm hang <laughs> just the laziest arm hang is just hanging out mm. <laughs> it's a funny position <laughs> Oh, but it's allowing the things that we overlook to open up. So interesting what allows itself to stretch when we're not making it about this whole, this whole thing stretching when we're just making it about the moment between our shoulder tip and our right hip bone. Okay, and now reach up and out, and let's go a little deeper in our poses. So we're going to turn so that we are facing the front of our mat. I mean, the short side of our mat. It doesn't matter which direction, whichever direction makes it easier for you to see the screen. And I'd like you to, we're going to start here in this neutral position, and I want you just to so feet are flat on the ground, palms of the feet are flat on the ground, knees are pointing to the sky. And notice that it's not a perfect straight line. Um, I'd like you to find where you can most comfortably lay over your legs. So it might be this far up. That might be where you're laying. For me, I'm kind of trying to hold my, keep myself from falling because it's so high. So I have it here. You can also put a pillow between your thighs and your legs. And I'd like you to just let the head rest between your knees. Palms are on either side of the feet. They're gonna anchor you. And now you're just gonna let the body roll forward. Breath by breath, go as slow as you want. Let the feet creep forward, keeping the body in contact with the legs. And wherever that molt, that this, this starts getting difficult and stops being comfortable, I want you to go one step farther and then back off a half step from there. So one step farther than is comfortable, a half step back from that place so that you are on the brink of discomfort. And that's where we're gonna hang out. The goal is to keep our hands on either side of our feet, our upper body in contact with our thighs and our head resting between our legs or our upper body on a bolster and our head resting over the bolster. I have a natural rotation outward. So my feet are kind of resting on my hands, the outsides of my feet, because they just flop open in, in a resting position. But if you have a, if you typically are parallel, then let your feet, let the palms of your feet rest on the ground. If your feet typically turn if you have a strong inner rotation, which is quite rare, then that's, I, I, I don't know how to address it actually. If you do, then tell me 
in the comments and I'd like to talk to you so that we can find out how to apply yin to that um, natural rotation because I want you to be in comfort as well. <sighs> Interestingly enough, the biggest challenge is going to be to let your head rest, especially the back of your neck. Because the legs are doing just a little bit of work, so they're kind of occupied. Find rest here in this place. One of the things that happens in yin is that gravity wins. <laughs> and so as your body feels obligated to flatten itself towards the ground and it becomes easier, then let your legs creep farther forward. You might surpass what you've ever done before, but the point is not to do that. The point is to stay in your mildly discomfort zone, but more comfortable than discomfort than uncomfortable zone. And let your body naturally unfold. Gravity Always Wins is a song by the band Modest Mouth from the 90s. I don't want you guys to think that I made that up. This is a really easy way to feel that breath moving into the lower back because the lower back is mildly stressed right now. So anything expanding from it, you will feel that sensation. It's easier to tap into it in this position. And now I'd like you to walk your hands up, leave your feet where they are, wherever they stopped. Leave your feet where they are. Walk your hands back, back, back on either side of your body. We're going to go into fish pose. So you're going to walk your hands back so that they are behind your, your fingertips are pointing towards your butt. Your shoulder tips are going to still pin back and down. And you're going to rest on your forearms so that your whole forearm and hand is on the ground. Shoulder tips pinned to the ground is really helpful here. Otherwise, you'll sink into your shoulder, between your shoulders, and that's not helpful. Leave a little bit of energy pointing in the direction of your feet. Not Barbie toe level, but like let your feet relax so that they don't move with you for, this, for the... Uh, beginning of fish. So what's going to happen, I'd like you to look at the, at the monitor um, to, to watch me do it before you do it because you don't want to turn your head when you're in the pose. Okay, so watch me. You're going to look at my feet. They're anchored towards the ground and that's really helpful because I'm going to arch up and back and I'm going to let my neck break. And that is fish. Okay, we're gonna spend just a little bit of time here. It's one of the first times in three days that we've let so much of our front side body be exposed. So be super gentle with yourself. And if you need to, you're welcome to put like three pillows behind you and just rest into this so that you don't break your neck like I'm doing. Um, but if you're comfortable with it and you can be very gentle, then you're welcome to take the neck break with this pose. And let's do it. <laughs> I like doing it. Let's do it. Don't look at the monitor while we do it. Inhaling and exhale. Let's take this pose. 
fish pose. The yin version, if you're used to like raising your legs or arching your body a lot, a lot, a lot. This is not the same. How does it feel to expose your throat to light, to the sun? When I was little, my mother would have us do these like chin exercises for our lower neck to help strengthen this area that rarely gets strength. We would, um, take our chin and we would like do like a pull up with our chin or lower jaw and it would pull up the chin. It's kind of fun to do here now, if you want. Just pull up, oh, low, 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 low. Ah, breathing, 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 always breathing. Swallowing is really hard. I needed to swallow and <laughs> that was hard. Not worth the effort, to be honest. Oh. Exposing so much of your front body, but remembering that all of what's taking place today is happening in this beautiful sphere of green light that we set our practice with today beautiful healing green light that's all around us all the time in the grass in our clothes in our plants in the tree leaves even in the winter in a forest okay let's bring the head gently 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 bring the gaze back to look over your feet Walk yourself up, so bring the weight off of the forearms back onto the hands. And we're going to go forward again, but this time we're going to bring our legs beneath us. And if you look at the screen, you'll see that I'm going to bring my toes to touch. I'll bring my seat to my heels, and now we find ourselves in a pretty active child's pose. So we'll start with the active version with our hands in front of us. And then we'll deactivate it a little bit by bringing the hands to either side of the body, letting our forearms rest on our knees. If your forehead is not in contact with the ground and your body is not laying between your knees, then grab a pillow or a bolster and support yourself. A nice long bolster going from your crotch to have your whole center body rest, you know, your, your belly, your heart, your nose, your forehead on that bolster is so, so wonderful. It's like such a wonderful feeling. If you can't, if you have, do not yet have the, flexibility. Um, don't worry, you're not very far from it. It's just a matter of breathing and releasing. And as gravity wins with you today, you might find yourself expanding closer and closer to the ground. For those of you who do have your forehead and nose on the ground, um, but you need more space, you're welcome to take an ear one or the other, I will cue you when to change ears. Mm. And you're welcome to let sound come out. Mm. It's a very 
beautiful way to help heal your body. Every chakra actually has a resonating tone that really nurtures it. And I have multiple videos of different mantras and affirmations that are played to the um, solfeggio frequency that your different chakras appreciate. You're welcome to find those on the channel. They're there. I think they're even called like solfeggio frequencies or something with the word solfeggio in them. Hmm. Turn, if you've got your ear, if you had one ear on the ground, turn the other. It may not be as available because remember our left sides and right sides are totally different. So be kind and give yourself a bolster if you need it for the other side. Hmm. Our left side is our feminine energy side. It receives, in terms of circulation, our left side is holding, it's, it's the waste cleanup. It's the, it's the trash truck side. Trash truck, trash truck. My nephew Mason says trash truck, trash truck. Um, you're gonna let that, this is the side that receives all the waste and helps to expunge it through sweat, through urine, through, um, through our lymph nodes, through our armpits. This is why deodorant is really, you know, it's one of those things where you want to really be intentional about what you're putting in your armpit because it, there, it is such an easy way um, to contact the inside of your body. Um, it's an easy way. It's the way that a lot of waste is expelled from the body, you know, through the outway. But if we pack those, those um, valves that are meant to push waste out, if we pack them with aluminum, it does what aluminum does. It seals off the valves. And so then that waste backs up into and stays in our body. And we have to rely on sweat and urine and, and bowel movements to do, to make up for that. And that can be really hard on the body. So it's really helpful to use deodorant that doesn't have aluminum so that you can keep those valves open, but still smell summer fresh in your armpits. I've been experimenting with that. Is my left armpit smellier than my right armpit? <laughs> Okay, let's bring the forehead back to the ground or bring the head to neutral. If you um, turn different sides and we're going to roll up through the spine. This is also a really great pose that we just did. If you have cramps. Um, but I will tell you, that's what every yoga teacher has always said to me. Bring the shoulders up to your ears, roll them back down the spine. Every yoga teacher has always said that to me and because I've gone to so many different types of yoga even, you know, for my cramps and I felt no relief when I did that, but I will say it because apparently it works. Um, the way that I got relief from cramps was that I stopped allowing myself to be fed through the intuitive emotional from the left and mental from the right. Oh, by the way, the right side of the body is the masculine side. Um, moon, sun. So I, uh, I stopped feeding myself dis ease and cycle over cycle, the cramps started to diminish the more aware I was and the more, the less willing I was to receive because we're, natural receivers so what happens is because we're naturally receiving we just receive everything indiscriminately but when we harness the power our superpower as receivers 
we realize that we can leverage a lot of power and decide what we want to receive by being by practicing discernment and being a lot more vigilant with what we're allowing our magnets what we're allowing ourselves to receive and going yes no yes no and in our case in my case and in the case of most of my clients people in the collective no becomes a lot more used than it ever was when we were cramping so that was how that was a major way that i helped relieve my cramps <laughs> when diet exercise including yoga including bikram like every day sometimes twice a day uh supplements medication um hormone therapy <sighs> when none of that worked this did and to learn more about that definitely check out the fierce gentleness collective there's always a link in the descriptions of of each video okay so you guys, here we are at the end of our series of poses that are dedicated to the three days of radical restoration that happens in our first three days of our menstrual cycle during our menstrual phase. Tomorrow, things are gonna start to get a little spicier. We're not done with the menstrual phase. We're not done with the priestess phase. We're still flowing, but we are starting to orient towards action more. And we're not going to hold back what's ready to move forward. That becomes its own fight. And, and we want gentleness, not, not fighting. Yeah. So let's bring our hands to heart. And better yet, let's bring our hands out, up, closing that sphere of light. If you so desire, you're also welcome to just walk through the rest of your day with that sphere of green light energy with you. But for those of us who want to contain it, close your hands, bringing all that spherical energy back to this one line and then imagining as your hands come closer to your heart from over your head, the line is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And all of that energy that was all around us that we were feeding through this bi-directional dance of love by being gentle to ourselves, being close with the earth, breathing, all of that energy fed that light and now we take that nutritional light and we put it back into the body and we let it shoot in two directions so in one way it's going up through our throat chakra through our third eye through our crown chakra to the heavens and it's shooting down through our solar plexus through our sacral chakra through our root and into the earth and that line is feeding into this massive line that is going through all of the world, through the heavens, back down to the earth, through the earth, back up to the heavens. And we remember the little drop of water that we are in this massive ocean of being. You are not alone. You are such a part, a integral, beautiful, special part of this world. And because you were willing to show up and take care of yourself and take care of your whole being, the world is better for it because you are modeling to others the power of wholeness in your authenticity, in your presence. You are enough. Thank you for being enough today. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace.